So the concept is students need freedom to gain independence. Here's the strategy to help them build up that self-control they're going to need. It's called the freedom list and it's explained in that one page handout. The freedom list is nothing more than a little roster of names you're going to pin up in your room someplace. Very small, very inconspicuous. I got it right here. Little tiny paper list. And I'm going to use that list to separate the wheat from the chaff. Now for me every year, I started with this one. You don't have to. You don't have to. I was in Bakersfield months ago talking to the high school teachers there. And when I mentioned let them work wherever they want in the room, this lady said, hey, I got 40 kids in my classroom, jam-packed, that ain't going to work. Well, then don't extend that freedom. What else could you extend to students? And it gave them some time to talk about it, and they came up with two. Somebody said, how about a snack? And I said, yeah, hey, they're always hungry. Always hungry. And if you're going to extend a snack, raise the bar. No, it's got to be a healthy snack. Don't bring in your flaming Hot, you know, Doritos in here. Fling those around. Because look, if the only way I can eat in your fourth period classroom is to bring in a healthy snack, then I'll raise my game. Somebody else said, how about earbuds? Some kids can attend and be productive with an earbud. Some kids can't. I said, yeah, why not? Why not? It could be get a drink of water. It doesn't matter. Some simple freedom. In this situation, though, we're talking about working away from your desk. And I do this maybe week three, four, five, six, based upon how long it took them to get to know me once we kind of settled into, into school. So let's say week four. It's a Monday. I'm telling my guys, hey guys, starting today, you may work wherever you wish in the classroom. If we're not using the group table, feel free to use the group table. You want to lean against the wall to read a book? Lean against the wall. You want to stretch out in the carpet? Grab a clipboard so your writing's legible. Please don't sit in someone's empty seat if they've moved. They might be coming back. But hey, you may work where you wish. Here's all I ask. When you move, you need to be productive. Now, from a teacher's point of view, that's a reasonable request. We're thinking being productive is a great thing. Make you a better student, better grades, better college, better job, better life. But that kind of thinking we do naturally occurs in a very specific part of your brain. All conceptual thinking occurs in the prefrontal cortex. And that part of your brain takes years to develop. We're talking early 20s before it's fully developed. So I'm talking about, hey, do the right thing, which believe it or not, is just a concept. But when I said to my students that morning, you can work wherever you wish, that lit up their limbic brains. And that's the big part of your brain that deals with the real world, all the stuff around you that's real, that has an influence on students. So I've got students right now thinking, oh, sweet work wherever I want. Finally, I can sit next to my friends because I never get to because I always talk and goof off. Now I can sit next to my friends and talk and goof off. This is going to be awesome. And my request to be productive, oh, that's a soft little voice. That takes a long time for students to tune into that voice. So let's roll this forward, okay? It's later on that same morning. I see two boys at the group table. Best friends don't sit near each other, but they've chosen to get up and relocate. And they're on task, they're being productive. That's a glorious thing to see. Student leadership right there. Calvin joins them. <clears throat> Calvin's not quite so self-directed. Calvin's used to reminders and warnings and threats and all that kind of junk. And in less than a minute, he's joined the two boys. And in 30 seconds, he's trying to goof off with them. What I learned we can't do in those situations is just remind. Calvin, what do you say about being productive? Uh, I'm sorry, I'll stop. I'll get back to work. 30 seconds later, Calvin, come on, man. Uh, I'm sorry. Just so we're clear, this is all reminders do. That is all they do. You're mainly talking to yourself. When it comes to improving behavior, action is the only reality. Piaget taught us that. They learn through their experience, not what they hear you say, but what they live with you. And the list is the action piece that backs up my expectation of you being productive. So when I saw him not being productive, I just called him over. Uh, Calvin, yeah, that wasn't being productive. Back to your seat, please. And if he tries to argue, which he does with his parents and does with other adults, two words I've used forever, when, then. Those are two great words to use with students. No, Calvin, stop. When you're not productive, then you go back to your seat. And what I do is I draw a line through his name. 
which means for the rest of this week, he may not work away from his seat. He's lost that freedom. But it's a temporary loss. What will I post on Monday? Yeah, brand new list. I love teachers. We are fresh start people. Every day's a fresh start. Every week's a fresh start. So I don't hesitate to go scritch, knowing that's how you learn, and that you get the freedom back on Monday. So I'm okay with that. And as that first week goes by with the new freedom, more and more kids lose it. All those kids have had second, third, and fourth, and fifth chances all throughout their lives. Now Mr. Moore is saying, uh, no, no means no. Uh, no. Here's the problem. Without that list and the ability to draw a line through a student's name, every one of those lines would have been nothing more than a reminder. Words. Hey, words. 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 And see, at a certain point, after enough reminders that slowly get louder and angrier, at a certain point, I'm going to snap. <laughs> hey, forget working away from your seats. Thought you'd appreciate that. I guess not. Stay in your seats. That was me in my first five years. Blasting everyone for the actions of a few. The high school folks, I said, hey guys, put down the shotgun. It doesn't work. Too much collateral damage. Pick up a sniper rifle. That's what you want. A sniper <laughs> rifle. Now don't tweet out, Rick Moore said we need sniper rifles. It's, it's just a metaphor. But really, this guy has no place in the classroom. Where are the high school teachers? High school teachers, you got video cameras in your classrooms. They're built into cell phones. You do not want to be the next big loser on YouTube because some kid filmed 30 seconds of you just screaming at a student about who knows what. In fact, here's the easiest trick in the world to keep yourself calm when you feel like you're about to snap. Easiest trick in the world. Whenever I was talking to a student and inside I was getting a bit aggravated, I always visualized the parent standing right behind the child. Always. Now I realize it's kind of a creepy photo, but, <laughs> but that's her baby. That's her princess. What would mom want me to say? Nothing sarcastic, nothing belittling or threatening. Can't tell you how many times that image kept me calm, kept me professional. So that guy, no. No place in the classroom. Look at the wall. There's evidence on the wall. Ulrich, Brianne, of course you may move. You move and you're productive. Calvin, I'm not sure why you're asking. There's a line through your name. <laughs> not today, but Monday. Because if you do take it away, which I used to, Hey, just forget it. Forget the work away. I don't know why I try with you guys sometimes. Just stay in your seats. All right? What do you possibly say to those students? What do you possibly say to them? These kids are going, whoa, 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 whoa. Calvin steals something and you cut off my hand. So in this classroom, doing the right thing has no value. Oh, well, that's good to know. Because doing the right thing is hard work. If there's no benefit to all that hard work, I ain't going to try that hard. I'll be a jerk too. Now, if you're doing it the right way, you keep that freedom. And it's even more precious to you at this point in time because not everybody still has theirs. And I thought our country was based on independence and freedom. But schools have become these lockdown affairs. I was at UC Riverside years ago talking to 100 student teachers who are now in classrooms student teaching. And at a certain point, I ask them, how many of you guys are in a classroom in which students have to ask to get a drink of water? Two-thirds of the hands went up. And I said, hey, don't tell the math teachers I said this, but that's a terrible policy. Terrible. If nothing else, it sends this message. Hi, guys. I'm your teacher this year, and I don't trust you. I don't trust a single one of you to do the right thing on your own. You want a drink? You want a drink? You want a drink? You ask me. All right, make that a part of your culture. If you like being nibbled to death by ducks. Because they're going to come at you. They're out there working on something. Somebody pops his head up. Little nonverbal request for water. Huh? First response, of course, is no. Maybe this will go away. So he does that, and you shake your head. He's like, well, no, I just want to get drink water. And two minutes later, he's back. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> 
And then it just gets stupid after a while. It's like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> So you grant your permission. You nod your head. He's thinking, this is it. This is my one big shot at getting up out of my seat. So what do I do? Maximize the journey. And on the way over to the drinking fountain, I mess with stuff I'm not supposed to mess with. Stop and talk to you, tease you, taunt you. No, let's get a drink. Let's get a drink. Something get a drink. Come on. Just get a, let's get a, let's get a, yeah, yeah. On the way back, slap, slap, taunt, poke. You know, if Christmas happened once a week, it wouldn't be special. And sadly for students, getting a drink is like Christmas. And of course they overreact. And when they overreact, a lot of teachers clamp down even more. Might as well pass out the tin cups at that point. Attica, Attica. It's all going to fall apart. <laughs> no, get a drink and do it the right way. Keep your name on our new freedom list, which is get a drink. Because now we have two. Which I wouldn't introduce right away, but give them that one. A couple of weeks, dial it in. Now let's add another one. Maybe a month from now, another one. As many as you want. Because there are multiple lists. The knuckleheads have a chance to hang on to at least one of those lists. But hey, bottom line, you made a mistake. You weren't productive when you moved. That's okay. That's why we have school to learn. Monday, yay. Brand new list. Try again. I had some students take six weeks to figure this out. Six weeks. I'm okay with that. I got you all year. I got you all year. Here's another one. Imagine these are magnetic tiles on a whiteboard. Okay? Okay. 